Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be using a majority of Clio products because I recently got a Clio haul. I tested out these Clio products for quite some time. I just did not want to like immediately do a review about them because I wanted to test it out for a few times and see if it was okay for my skin. And they, are, they passed the test. My first step will be using the Sunjong Sika uh, Relief Toner Pad. This is still my this is my favorite holy grail. It's like in the morning right now and I need to rush a bit because I have to go out later. So I'm, while I'm waiting for the toner to like settle down and dry, I want to talk more about the products that I brought with me today. These products are from Cleo's Vegan line, which is known as Vegan Wear. And apparently all the products in this line has been produced with only um, vegan ingredients. And he has like received some e-vegan certification from funds. Uh, I'm not a professional and all that, I'm literally just like reading it off from the product description but I'm pr pretty sure that means like it's a good thing, right? <laughs> all the products are hypoallergenic which means that it's suitable for people with sen sensitive skin like people like me. All the products in this vegan line, the, the packaging is absolutely so amazing. It looks so pretty and so aesthetic like I'll show you guys in a bit. I'm going to use the Sunjong Emotion now. The foundation that is in this vegan line is a semi-matte but it is um, quite a moisturizing foundation and I'll get into more details about it later. So even though I do still need to put some moisturizer beforehand, I don't need to worry so much about it being dry. Like if I had to compare the Innisfree No Sebum foundation, it's also a semi-matte and I feel like that one, if I use that foundation, I really have to like spam my moisturizer because it does get a bit dry over the hours. I'll talk more about the foundation later when I'm using it. But I just wanted to say that I really love this Clear Vegan line products. Purchased all of these products by myself. I'm not sponsored, so I'm being 100% honest about my review of it. I mean like Cleo, if you want to sponsor me, you know what's up. <laughs> but yeah, I just felt like it's a really good product so I wanted to share more about this product with you guys. So the first product in this vegan wear line will be this UV setting primer. It's so pretty, doesn't it look like any... doesn't it look like a table ornament? I love how it has a very clean look to it. Normally you can just apply it on your palm but I like to apply it on my skin like that. And this is a 3-in-1 UV setting primer. As you can see, it offers, uh, it helps with tone up, which is um, quite a peachy color. It helps with tone up, primer to make up base, and it also helps with UV protection. So it has like a watery consistency and applies very smoothly to the skin. Like, I mean, you saw how I blended it out, right? No problems with it at all. I absolutely love this primer and it's something that I, I would get again if once I finished it. It doesn't feel thick on the skin and it sits really well. I believe I have mentioned a lot of times on this channel that I do not like heavy textured creams or makeup and this is totally very lightweight so it's perfect for people like me who have the same kind of preferences. Sometimes I just use this by itself because it doubles up as a foundation-free look. It's really good and I recommend it. Please don't mind this big bump here. I think I got bitten by an insect or something. For people who are worried about um, if there are silicone material inside, fret not. This is made of cornstarch material. But do take note because it is only just a, a primer so it does not offer like great super high coverage that same of a foundation even though i say that it could double up as a foundation free look it doesn't exactly give the coverage the same coverage as a foundation as i said just now you can see that the tone up is a slightly peachy color i think it's great on both warm or cool toned people for warm toned people like me you saw my how my skin was like slightly yellowish and it just turned like pinkish and like it looks very healthy right now i think for cool people um you look around the same just slightly whiter i'm not sure but it should still be okay now we're moving on to the next product in this line which is the vegan wear um cover concealer 
is how it looks like. So before I use it, I like to rub some excess off on the on the tip, and then I apply it on my dark circles. So I the this is like a the applicator is like a spatula. I think I've said before I was looking for like a good concealer, and I found this, and ever since then, I've been sticking to this. Like this has been my new concealer that I use almost every um time I do my makeup because it's just so good. So I'm putting it on my chin to brighten my chin area. I think this concealer is great. It offers high coverage and it's moisturizing as well. It's not drying at all because it contains vegan ceramide. I'm gonna blend the one under my nose first. It is pretty um resistant against the water and sweat so far the time that I tested it I didn't see that it has I didn't see my concealer smudging or cracking uh yeah and also because it's very moisturizing it doesn't crack I think I'm gonna put a bit on my forehead as well some I feel like my bottom part is a bit too white <laughs> so the cracking part is like very important because sometimes when you use concealers especially around the nose area after a few hours it tends to crack at least for me, it does not happen. Look, look at how the finish looks so natural. So if I'm planning to have a semi-foundation free look, I usually just apply the UV setting primer and my concealer and I'm done. These two products are enough to make my skin, to help my skin look healthy. While also covering the blemishes on my skin. The finish it gives, it's beautiful, isn't it? Now moving on to the next um, product in this vegan wear line. It is the Ceramide Velvet Cushion. I'm so sorry that it's like dirty. So, I think the first thing you notice is that it has a very unique pebble-like design. I Actually, I think it gained popularity also because of the design. It's very cute and compact. And the review pack that comes along with it also uses less aluminum and is also FC, FSC um, approved. This is a cushion foundation that I have been loving ever since I started using it. The coverage is immensely high. It helps my skin look really smooth and it is very moisturizing considering the fact that this is a semi-matte foundation because it contains vegan ceramide in it. But the way I use this cushion is slightly different from how I would use any regular um, cushions out there usually you know you would just take the cushion puff stamp it on the foundation and stamp it on your face right but for this foundation the texture is slightly thicker so it might get a bit too thick and heavy on your face if you just directly stamp it on your face with the um, cushion puff provided but not to worry even though it is thicker there is a way to make it feel not so heavy on your face so for that i was actually watching a korean beauty youtuber called minsko and she actually recommended how we can use this foundation in a in a better way where we can control the amount and apply it thinly onto our face so i'll just be sharing the method that she recommended which worked very well for me. So to control the amount, it would be best to use a brush, a foundation brush, and the brush that I'm using is Philly Millie 822 brush. It's a V-cut foundation brush. Oh, I forgot to mention that the cushion puff provided is also made from environmental friendly materials such as fermented corn additive. As you can see, I've already stamped the product on the brush, but I will just dip it in here very lightly, and then I'll apply it to both my cheeks first. I feel like after you use the um, primer and the concealer, there's not much um, left to cover on your face because the concealer and primer has done an absolutely good job at it. So the foundation is really just to finish the look. So by using a brush, you can control the amount better. And then I usually would stamp it another time just for my forehead. I think you could use any other wet um, foundation brush that you own, but for me, I followed um, Minsko uh, recommendation and I used this brush instead. So the shade I got for this foundation is also ginger, 
it can look a bit yellowish so that's why I tend to apply a bit more of the UV setting primer to tone up my skin and to make it more peachy pinkish looking. If I applied this directly onto my skin without using it, I would definitely look super yellow and um, unless that's your skin tone, it's fine but it really doesn't match my skin tone if I just use it by itself. Another alternative uh, to use this foundation if you do not want to use foundation brush or if you do not have a foundation brush is, well, you can still use the uh, cushion puff provided. This is also what Min Skull recommended. Instead, you can, once you dip it in the foundation, you rub it off on the foundation um, lid. So you are like wiping off the excess foundation. <laughs> I just realized I did not peel this off. Because usually I use my big mirror when I'm applying my foundation or like doing my makeup. And the glow it gives is so amazing. And also this foundation is like, it has this magnet when you close it. So you open, close. I just don't exactly like the fact that it gets easily stained by other found like what, by foundations on your hand or whatever. So I got this mark on the day that I got this, which I was so sad. I was like, wait, what? I stained it? I tried to remove it, but I couldn't. So maybe that's something to take note if you like your products to look clean. <laughs> Afterwards, you can finish off with um, powder, but I generally don't use powders, so I usually just move on to the next step. Uh, but do take note that this foundation is not exactly um, mask proof and smudge proof because it is very moisturizing. So it tends to get on your mask, but it's not that bad. You can just reapply a bit. And even if it does get on your mask, it does not like show on your face that, you know, some parts are like gone or something. Yeah, so it's totally fine. Okay, so I'm going to do my brows later because I left my brow powder in the bathroom. So I'm just going to skip to do my eyes first. Cleo Pro Eye Palette Mini and it's shade 1 in Mono Mood. I love this palette because it's almost everything. Like, it offers glitter and uh, you can use this too for contour as well. You could, I don't, but you could. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to use the lightest colour in this palette, which is Beige Leaf as my base um, colour. Oh god, okay, so I'm slightly rushing for time because I am a bit late. I love this Beige Leaf colour because it's very light, but it's not so light to the point where you can't see that you didn't put anything on. But it's as a base color. It's also not too dark, so I love the, I love I love that. And then using the what's remaining on my brush, I just apply it to my triangle zone. Okay, next I'll use this mono hazel um, color, and I'll apply it to my lid. I'll just apply it to like my double eyelid, so you can see like there's a graduation, a lighter brown to darker brown. So I won't go too heavy on this color. It's actually quite pigmented. I first saw this when I was doing my shopping in Watson. <laughs> and there was like a 40% sale, discount sale. So how could I miss that? Being the auntie that I am. I see a big sign, 40% sale. I'm like, what, 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 what's on sale? And then I just dove into it. I'm like, oh, okay, okay. I'm getting this. With what's remaining on the brush again, I apply it on my triangle zone. I love the glitters um, in this palette. This is Sunshine Poem and this is On the Breeze. On the Breeze is like a flashier and more glamorous kind of glitter. Um, so I will use it when I have like heavier makeup. But today I feel more natural. So I'm going to use Sunshine Poem because it's the glitter it gives is more subtle and sheer looking but that's exactly why i love it because it still gives me the sparkles without overdoing it i'm just going to use my finger put it on the middle okay so i'm using uh, i'm going to use a bigger brush now and it's just to blend out whatever um, rough lines Okay, next I will use this tiny little brush and I will mix this color Mono Hazel and Mono Brown together just very lightly and put it on my lower lash line, like half of my lower lash line. This makes my lash line more obvious and I don't know, feels like it opens up. My eye makes it look a bit longer. 
I will be using the Peripera Titan Edition Brown Eyeliner. I wanted to use the black one, but I feel like the black might be a bit too harsh for this look. So yeah, the problem is getting is not drawing it, but like getting them to match. This my both my eye shapes are a bit like slightly different as well. So oh my god, I think I messed up a bit on this eye, but I don't want to touch it anymore. I think it's a common thing on this channel. Once I I've done my eyeliner and it's like super bad. I'm not gonna touch it anymore because I think it's okay. <laughs> I'm gonna do my brows now, so I'm gonna go take my brow powder. You already know which brow product I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use this brush from Innisfree. Stamp it on. I mean, <laughs> I only have one color to stamp on because it broke the other part, so you guys know what's up. I'm just gonna fill it in. Oh my god, like I'm literally going for it because I'm literally rushing for time. I spend too much talking about like the Clio products. But it's totally worth it. Okay, whatever. I am done with my brows. Okay, I'm gonna curl my lashes now. I am gonna use this Shu Uimura eyelash color. Really curls my lashes very well. I'll be using this Cleo Q Lash Super Proof Mascara 01 in long curling. I think there are like two more other designs, but this is the most popular design in this line. I love the mascara one. It's very pre it's 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 very thin. I think this is one of the best mascaras that I've tried and uh, that holds my curls pretty well and makes my lashes look longer while giving it a quite a natural look. Look, look at like the lengthening. Beautiful. Anyway, this one is amazing. It allows for precise application. You see a lot of, pro of the product being deposited onto my lashes and that's great. And I bought this as a set. It came together with this Q Lash Mascara Remover. It has it is amazing no matter which mascara i use i always use this to help remove it's basically um it looks like this it has this like weird shape it helps with removing the mascara it just has like oil coated all over it so i'm gonna use this fall in carrot peripera blush so i'll be using my blush brush there are three colors what i'll do is i'll start from this color and then this and then this so that it looks like a radiation i'll be using the first color now the color payout is pretty amazing. With the first color, I'm just putting it on my cheeks. Okay, moving on to the second shade, I will bring it up to my cheekbones. So one thing I like about this palette is that every color has like a bit of shimmer to it. So it has that natural um, glowy effect. I usually use this blush when I'm going for a more brown or corally look. Now I'm going to use third shade and I'll just use my finger. And I just like to put it on my nose bridge. Oh dang, I forgot about contour. I'm gonna move on to contour now. I'm gonna use this Etude House Contour. This is the shade in Inventor. This is the brush that came along with it and I'm using it. I'm gonna use the first shade for my nose. So first I'll link it from my eyebrow to my to this area to give it more shadow. Okay, and then I'll bring it down to here. Just make it look a bit straighter. Okay, whatever. I'm done with contour. <laughs> the quickest contour ever. Okay, so I'm going to do Acosal now. I'm going to use this Colorgram uh, Acosal Maker. It is in the shade 1, Warm Tone. I'm only going to use the concealer today. So, I'll put it very lightly. Now I'll squeeze my eyes. And lightly. The trick I learned for Acosal is don't like stick to your eye shape. Towards the end, you bring it down a little bit. I'm gonna use my hand to blend it out a little so it doesn't look too harsh. And I'm gonna use this Colorgram um, eyeliner in 30%. This concept is very interesting. They have 20%, 30%, and 70%. 20% is maybe to use like to help change your 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 lids. I could like use it to extend um my lid like that. 30% is for making Igasal and um, the 70% is basically an eyeliner. Always start from the middle. And that's how you use this. I think it's okay. Using this um, brush again, I'm gonna mix uh, these two again. Mono hazel and mono brown. Draw a bit darker here just to fill in the area. No matter how late I am or whatever, I am never gonna skip out on highlighter this is the one and only romand highlighter that you have 
always see me use on this channel. Okay, so I'm going to be slightly gentle on this today because the blush already um, gave me very natural looking shine. And one tip I learned is to put a bit on your middle of your nose bridge. So I have one last um, Cleo product to recommend. Uh, this is not in a vegan wear. This is the Cleo Dewy Blur Tint and it's in the shade 10 Nude Bloom. It really does what it says. It really helps to blur the lips. When you first apply it, it feels very moist, almost like a watery consistency. But give it a few seconds to settle in and it will dry matte. It's a very lightweight tint. I always forget that I actually applied it on my lips, which is why I also love it as well. It is, I would say, quite transfer proof and uh, mask proof. Of course, it does come out when you eat. I think that's normal. That's like, it happens with almost every tint. So that's normal when that happens, just reapply. It looks a bit more corally on camera, but it's around there. So you see that when I first apply it, it applies very moist. Ta-da! And I usually just do like one to two layers. Alright, this is the final look. I totally love it, even though it's done a bit in a rush, but okay. I hope anyone watching this enjoyed the recommendations. Um, I really love Clio. They're a bit more expensive though, so um, just take note. And uh, yeah, I really gotta go now. Thank you so much for watching. Catch you guys in my next video. Bye! Hi, welcome to this short segment. I just wanted to show you um, how my face and makeup looks like after 12 hours. The foundation is still going quite strong. It did rub off on my mask, but you see the coverage is still pretty good. And for the mascara, for this eye, the lashes are still kind of up. And this one's just completely flopped. I think because I didn't put enough mascara and I didn't curl it as well as that eye. So. For the dark circles, actually more like my eye bags, so I can't comment on that because no matter what concealer I use, no matter how I cover it, it will come out and appear. So if I go from a lower angle, you can't really see the dark circles. That means that the concealer is also pretty long lasting, like what I said earlier on in the video. And if you see in places here, there are no cracks. And you know, you guys know, I have very dry skin. So this is really a good, very highly moisturizing foundation and concealer. Uh, and I really recommend people who have dry skin to go get it. Because look, after wearing it for 13 hours, my face is not, dry, is not cracking or dry in any places at all. That's super amazing. My lip tint came off obviously and I forgot to re reapply. It did last me quite nicely throughout the day. Yeah. I hope this um, insight helped. If any one of you wants to get any of the Clio products that I showed in the video. Right, yeah, so um, that's all from me. See you guys in the next video. Bye!